Hey guys, Darcy here. Today we're going to talk about my new recording template. Let's jump into it. All right, so we have Luna opened up here and what I wanted to go over is the recording template that I'm currently setting up and there's a reason for this. Uh, today is Friday, tomorrow on Saturday I'm actually going to be going to a writing camp where multiple artists come together, multiple producers, and basically there'll be different rooms uh, where a few artists can go with the producer and they'll be making up songs on the fly and I'll be doing uh, production in one of the rooms but I'll be doing recording for three of the sessions which would be about six hours long. And the thing that I've wanted to do is get myself set up with my recording template in advance. So I thought it'd be good to show you what I have before the session and then after the session when I come back if there's anything I learned that's changed or if anything I've done here really helped me I can speak to these these pieces. The real goal for this template is to stay lightweight um, and be ready to do very fast mixing but not necessarily a full out mix because there really won't be time. I want to be able to apply quickly, act fast, and have things in place, but not get bogged down with a heavy mix session. The first thing that we see is I'm going to start with the actual um, track view open. And the reason being is because the first task I know I'll be doing every single time is dragging files directly in, dragging a beat in um, to the session, maybe even potentially more files, but most of the time it'll be a single beat file. And I want to put that in the right place and have that already routed and bust to my instrumental track here, which has Neve Summing ready to go so that I can enable that if it seems appropriate for that, that scenario. Then I have three different recording tracks and I wanted to have these pre-set up so that once you enable them, um, what will happen is that, you know, I will have a, an API version, a knee version, Avalon that I can toggle between even though it's plugged to the same mic. So this will give me the opportunity to, you know, say that's not the right preamp for you. You know, oh, that's a female vocal, a male vocal, that kind of thing. I'll have the opportunity to quickly toggle between them. And one thing that's important to that is that I also actually have up here at Transport, we have the console tracking mode turned off, and this is going to enable me to ensure that when I go between them, it won't change out my unison preamp and my chain. So let's go over to the mixer view, make this a little bit smaller. And you can see here, if I scroll up, if we uh, record... So this is the point during editing. I realized that since console tracking mode wasn't enabled and I hit record enable in Luna, my mic setup got adjusted. So we're going to voice over the rest of this video, but I'll be back on camera for the after part. So my goal here was to have an API preamp, a Neve preamp, and an Avalon preamp all set up to go across three different record tracks. I could easily just toggle between with a record enable option. For record effects, there'd be an LA-2A compressor, and then on the inserts, we would have an auto-tune for monitoring and a flanger for fun. For two arm buses, we had the Real Verb Pro and the Precision Delay. That way we had lightweight DSP plugins so that we could use those during recording and they'd be decent for mix. You can see here that they were all ready to go uh, for sends on all of the record tracks. Now, for cues, this is interesting. I had both a headphone and the line three and four. Line three and four were actually what the artist was going to hear. Both of them had the main being piped into their, their headphones. As well, uh, for each one of the microphones, we were setting it up so that uh, we could push additional signal for anyone who says, hey, can you turn it up more on my, my headphones? You'll notice here that they are muted in the template. We'll talk about that more in the after part. Then the API consoles, plus some tape saturation ready to go with, of course, summing as well. Some things enabled so that way we would get the color even if we didn't have time to do any mixing. As well, there were some uh, AU plugins and routing set up for vocals, especially having Soothe enabled there meant even if we didn't do any mixing, we would still tame some of the harshnesses that we would get. That's enough voiceover for one day. Let's get to the day after review. All right, so it's the day after. Um, first off, the, the six hour sessions went well. There's basically three different sessions for three different producers, for different artists to come through, worked on about 
one full song, a couple, one interlude song, one kind of very freestyle singing kind of song, kind of like a rap cipher, but for singers. Overall, it was really successful. Luna held up well. I only had one real issue where my playhead and the loop, like the cycle loop, got out of sync in one session, uh, actually two, but the first session, I just fought against it and figured out how to work with it. I thought there was a setting I'd flip with a keyboard shortcut. I went through all my settings, couldn't figure it out. So I just fought along with it. Next session opened up. It was the way I expected it to work. Then another session had happened, but there wasn't many people in the room. So I closed the session, reopened it, and it fixed the problem. So maybe some kind of memory leak issue causing the playhead to get out of sync. But oh, other than that, everything was working really, really well. Arm was working really, really well. But there was a lot of things I learned, mistakes on my part and my template that I got to fix. So number one, I didn't have enough track set up. So I had set my template up thinking of working with one artist, um, having, you know, a lead track, some dubs, or could be used as harmonies, an ad lib track, um, some hooks. That stuff was great. Except I was forgetting that in this scenario, you had an undetermined number of artists that are going to jump on every single track. One track, you know, there was three artists. Another track, there was like four artists. Another track, there was like two artists. And on top of that, some wanted like to do, you know, four, five, six uh, harmony stacks. Some just wanted like one dub track. So everything was a little different. So what I would want to do in my template uh, for a session like that is to have really anybody, like a lot of hidden tracks ready to go. So that way I would have like kind of like a bunch of harmony tracks, dub tracks, um, you know, wide chorus tracks, ad libs, uh, and have that set up for at least like two to three artists. Uh, maybe just have a whole lot of tracks on the hidden that have nothing in them, but ready to go with that. So having more tracks. Issue number two. I forgot that I had set up my cues, but then I had muted them. And so I'd open up a session and sometimes the artist would be like, I can't hear myself. Sometimes it's not loud enough. Uh, and since I was sending the signal of the submix to their ears and sometimes not enough of the cues, I just had some rough moments. So really I would need to make sure that their vocal can come in loud against the overall music. Uh, which I'm just going to do with a combination of like the main out and their vocal track, but just having a little bit more set up and balanced and ready to go and just more testing for that. Number three, I had one time where the DSP error came up and I'd pretty much test everything in advance. And the issue you can run into when you're constantly flipping back and forth between like the, the arm record enabled and the, um, you know, the mixing and the opening and closing multiple sessions over many hours is that maybe the, the Apollo didn't release the DSP in time and the air popped up. So just thinking about efficiency of DSP plugins, you know, I didn't need all of my reverb tracks and being very conscious of what plugins I put in there to save DSP resources, because even though I might be at 80% of what my Apollo can handle, um, and I didn't have my satellite with me, I probably should give myself more buffer, more room, just to ensure that, you know, I don't run into those kinds of problems. I don't need those errors popping up in the middle uh, of the workload or to, you know, have your resources close to max and, you know, an unexpected issue occurs. I think those are like the three main problems. I might have had a few other small hiccups here and there that I'm not thinking about, but for the most part, things like having extra reverb tracks or extra record tracks, I didn't use my Neve, I didn't use my Avalon, I just used the API because you had to move quickly, so I just went with something I was comfortable with. I could have those set up, and that's really great, and I could leave them as hidden tracks, but at the end of the day, I don't truly need them. Um, and so that's something that something I could re completely remove or keep hidden. Um, the thing that keep in mind though, that the more tracks you have, even when hidden, the more stuff that if you just hit like select all for exporting, the more you're going to export a bunch of empty wave files that you don't need. So things to keep in mind, really. Overall, I felt that it was really successful and a learning experience and hopefully you found that my learning is helpful to, for you to learn as well. Um, things to set up for when you're 
going into unknown situations for recording and you need to be flexible and ready to to go so if you found this helpful let me know that if you have questions or ideas for things that you would like to know more of that i could get into for you let me know that as well and otherwise have yourself a good one peace (laughs) 